about maybe five, six miles from Grundy. Okay. All right. And then how, how far are you from Harmon and Grundy? I'm about 12 miles yeah. from Harmon and about 17 from Grundy, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what county is that in Virginia? Buchanan. Buchanan. Yeah. So what's the, what's the um, maybe the biggest uh, town nearby? Uh, Pikeville. Pikeville, which is not maybe even all that big, is it? It's uh, not that big. <laughs> yeah, so so we're, we're, it's like, um, what's the biggest town that people would know about near to it? Was Charlottesville or Roanoke or, or south into Carolina? Uh, Bluefield. Bluefield. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So so right. Yeah. So people. Yeah. Close you know, there. Down there, and this is the this is the real, the real deal. And, uh, and, you know, one of the things that, that has been impressed upon me and, and David, you know, so we're all, you know, we're, we're friends on Facebook for, you know, if y'all you all do the Facebook, we, you know, be happy to, to be friends on there. We share a lot of music and conversation that way. And one of the funny things that David did is he posted, uh, he posted his, uh, you know, immaculate uh, machine gun style Bill Napier break, you know, but he, he, he uh, in the post, he said, you know, this used to be called bluegrass music. Yeah. And sometimes I'll say, you know, traditional bluegrass is the, the, the music formerly referred to or called called bluegrass music. It's just yeah. changed so much. But, uh, you know, one of the things that, that I'm, I'm hoping the, the world will get out of all of this is uh, a little bit more light shown in on in your direction. Because as far as, you know, true mountain stylists, uh, there are not a whole lot of them left. And and you do a lot for the music in terms of uh, preservation and awareness. You've got a really awesome uh, YouTube channel where you post a lot of very rare, like one of a kind video. I know you post a lot of Monroe stuff, like folks will come to you and like to help them digitize stuff. So not only do you like pick great and teach great, but you're a historian for all this music too. It's a really special thing. So, uh, you know, big thanks on on all those those three. Well, that's Tips. Well, that's what I love to do. So <laughs> well, it shows, and uh, and it's a very small club of us, isn't isn't there? Very small. But you, you really don't hear uh, standard, traditional, minimalist, simple guitar playing like Raven Delmore, Don Reno, Bill Napier, George Shuffler, Doc Watson. Yeah, you don't hear much of that. Uh, uh, it's out there in small, you get it in small doses, but nobody that plays that way gets any recognition. No, no, that's, that's for sure. It's, a, it's very true. And it's a bit of a tragedy, but like, you know, uh, oh, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing traditional bluegrass guitar. Make it keep going. <laughs> uh, so. What was that? What was that offensive sound? I think that was coming from Kimberly's uh, direction. Uh, <laughs> we've just been been reviewing right there. But uh, one of the one of the great comments that I you know because I've I've researched a lot of you know this different esoteric concepts on uh, on YouTube and one of them is is uh, traditional bluegrass guitar. But uh, you know one of the one of the things that uh, the comments I picked up was that like you know you're onto something good when there's a low view count. When there's yeah. a low view count on YouTube, you know you're on the gold mine there. I can uh, say that. <laughs> So another one of the while I'm thinking of it, two other masters of the this kind of guitar playing, Chubby Anthony and Red Henry. Yes, you're absolutely right. Of course, uh, you know, and both of them virtually, you know, uh, unknown to the to the modern bluegrass world. Thank you for saying that. Um, you know, uh, James actually drew my attention to uh, Chubby's song uh, "Georgia Bound" on uh, on on a Napier recording, the folk folk something folk mountain. <laughs> Well, you know what I'm talking about, James? Folk and Heel. Folk and Heel. Yeah, yeah, which I was unfamiliar with. And that's, uh... that, was their, that was their first album. Okay, right. It's... It wasn't their first recording, but it was their first album. Right. So this is, this is real obscure stuff. I, I put that in, the, in, in James's video. Uh, you know, when he was talking about it, I put the album up there. So if you're really, you know, deep catalog, you know, you can... You can you can look that that kind of stuff up and and get more of this. Um, you know, you know, James. Yeah, just just one more one more question. Welcome everybody. Glad everybody's you know everybody's so great about showing up on time and all that. Really appreciate that. Um, is there anybody like you know who 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 is playing this style that we don't know about? We know about you, but that's about it. <laughs> uh, who else is playing? Oh, I would probably say he's passed away now, but I sent you a video of him, Fred Spencer. Fred Spencer. Yeah, y'all can check him out on YouTube. Is that on your channel also? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So James is, you know, James Stiltner, look him up on YouTube. It's a it's a wonderful channel. 
And 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 I have another question, which is uh you know there there are a few a few freaks out there you know we call you know I say freaks affectionately because it's like uh you know Monroe freaks was like kind of the the way we talk about people who like Monroe and all that kind of stuff a few a few Napier freaks out there a few Reno freaks and and I thought there was a very thoughtful question because uh you know uh, one of my when I know uh online asked me what is how would you characterize the difference between Bill Napier style and Don Reno style and you may have seen that thread that, that comment because they're very similar but to me they're also very different and and you're one of the people that would be able to to, to, to give a great answer for that I believe what do you reckon Don put a whole lot more up here up the than neck. Bill did he used the he used that a lot more than Bill did yeah Bill Bill is not going to confuse you up here yeah he's going to right down here is where you're going to have the trouble with Bill <laughs> okay yeah you know, because he was the, you know, he played banjo and mandolin. And I have a video of his wife saying that they were at a church somewhere and he sat down at a piano and started finding wow. finding things. <laughs> no now, now, besides Daybreak and Dixie, what's another like a hallmark, uh, you know, Bill Napier tune? Uh, Twilight Swamp. Twilight Swamp. See, I don't even know that one. It's like I, I learned most of my Napier through through David. Um, that's but, on the uh, Folk and Hill album. Folk and Hill. Uh, evidently, that's that's one that uh, that could, that could be required reading. Yeah. The, the Napier. Uh, and he also recorded it in the early '80s. Okay, cool. On the uh, let's say he he done it on the Hillbilly Fever album. Okay, cool. That, thanks and, for that. <clears throat> but. I bought that album thinking, oh, there's going to be all this guitar on it, and he didn't play any guitar on it. Oh, no kidding. How about that? Yeah, he didn't play that. He played mandolin. There's there's one really funny video. It's like I tried dear I tried very diligently to try to rip it rip it from from YouTube. It's the um, I should have just asked you to send it to me, uh, but it's the one of Bill playing the Black Mountain Rag at the party. Oh, yeah. And and it's awesome. I don't know. It's just a very casual picking session. And Bill Napier is, you know, he's probably in his I don't know sixties, and he yeah. is just burning down the Black Mountain Rag like it's nobody's yeah. business. And uh, my favorite part of the video, just besides it, it, it existing as, at all, is like you know wh whoever's got the camcorders, probably the eighties or something. I don't know, nineties probably. At yeah. one point, at one point, the, the, they see he's got the camera on Bill, and Bill is just ripping the snot out of the Black Mountain Rag, and the camera person goes over this way. And he, and he looks at the refrigerator and someone who's getting a beer out of the refrigerator. Yeah. yeah. And then he just comes right on back. Yep. It's like, okay, here's the <laughs> crazy guitar players of all time, but let's check out the guy getting the beer. Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. on back. That was, um, that was actually my grandpa playing guitar with him on that. I thought you were going to say he was a grand, as a grandfather getting beer. No, he, <laughs> no, no, he had already gotten the beer. He had already gotten the beer. Okay. <laughs> I, I was wondering. I was wondering who that was because they looked like they were amigos, like they were kind of like back to back, you know, like a little bit, like sitting next to each other, Bill and, yeah, and your that grandpa. Was my, that was my gr uh, grandpa playing wow. the guitar with him. Was he a Stiltner? And, what was his name? The what? Was he a Stiltner? What was his name? Johnny Jackson. Johnny Jackson. Okay, so he's your your mom's dad. Yeah. Right on. And uh, the guy playing the mandolin is my uncle. Dang. Okay. Cool. He was doing a good oh. job too. So, you know, yeah, right. and uh, um, he he didn't play it on that. But my other uncle, um, he was playing the, the uh, banjo that day. Cool. Is there any more of, of that video? That maybe that was the best one. That was the best one. But I, I think I have a few more posted on there. OK, cool. I must I must have missed those. I mean, there's, yeah. so, there's so much. On they all, what was funny about it was. You th throughout the entire video, you hear this hound dog barking <laughs> constantly in the background, uh -huh. and that was on a VHS tape. And my grandpa made a copy for one of his friends, and his friend watched it. And he said that was he said that would be a great video if somebody would have just shot that dog. <laughs> ah, oh my goodness, dogs that can be our teachers. I have a little bit of misophonia. I'm working through. They can be yeah. such good teachers. Yeah, but I I didn't care. You know, if it barked or what. I, oh, that that's... was actually that was actually before I started playing. Okay, right on. But what what year was that? Is it early nineties or late eighties? Ninety nine. Oh, ninety nine. So late nineties. Okay, very good. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, and he um, 
he had plans to come over here to the house and visit my grandpa and all this stuff. And then he passed away. Oh my gosh. Well, if he would have lived to see, I know he's smiling down on you, man. Cause you well, have really taken the, taking the torch and are shining it brightly. Well, that's, um, that's just my favorite style. That's all I can say about it. <laughs> I, I love what you, oh, there's my teacher right there barking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I love that, um, you know, what you said in the video, you said, I'd never heard anybody play that fast before. <clears throat> and that's, that's what, one of the things that really draws me to Napier is, is his speed, his cleanliness, his drive. And, and I was going to say, I ask a question. I think that he may have even more drive than, Bill, than, than Don Reno, a little bit, maybe. I can say that. I can say that. Because, it's, um, it's similar. Um, in some ways. I would strongly, um, there's one that he played. He didn't play it on the guitar, but people need to hear it. It's um, Buy All Them Cabbage Down. Mm -hmm. I think it was live with the, uh, let's see, uh, Carter and Ralph. Okay. And he is just wide open. Yeah. Some of the tempos that those guys play with the Stanleys is just like unfreaking believable. Like, yeah, it's very fun. Like we didn't even get to like, I, I, I didn't even, we did, we did 80, 100, 120, 140 and 150. And it's like, okay, that's fast enough. That wasn't even close to where they recorded the original version. They recorded the original version at 170, Bill, Bill, yeah. Bill, Bill Napier on the mandolin with the Stanley brothers. And so we're talking yeah. about like, woo, really fast, um, which can be really intimidating, you know, but. Uh, you know what I've been telling telling the folks is like you know you, you get your folded scale going, you get your you get your folded scale above like 120, and then you got the motor going, and you can start to to because a lot of the stuff isn't you know necessarily too complicated. Some of the little things, as I was finding out quite handily, the, the little nuances how how he does his his little teeny tricks, they are pretty pretty complicated, especially at 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 high speed. But a lot of it is just like a lot of the just like abject, I mean, it's not the right, a lot of the just like straight ahead shredding. It's not that hard once you got your right hand going. Right. Well, um, if you'll pay close attention to the guitar stuff that he played with Carter and Ralph, if you pay real close attention, you can catch a little mistake in every one. Oh, yeah. That's why I like him, because he reminds me of me. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> and me and my uh, grandpa, whenever whenever we played him, we would always put the same <laughs> in that he did. Yeah. <laughs> And some of those little things there, it's like, what note did you play? Was he, was he in between? In between? Yeah. Was it like, you know, what exactly? Monroe, you know, a little bit the same same way. That yeah. David, David has got a great term for it, desirable dirt. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think John Duffy called it humanness. Humanness. I like that, too. Like, <laughs> there's uh, a part in, um, there's a part in Will the Circle Be Unbroken that he played with Charlie Moore where he's doing a walk down from G hmm. to A. Uh -huh. He goes, hmm. That's what he was supposed to have done, but he's he hit that accidentally. Nice. And then whenever we play it, I always hit the. Then I tell them that, you know. That's fun. You know, it's it like... reminds me of that famous Earl Scruggs yeah. mistake that came out on the record where he and he went yeah. sharp or flat or something, and it came out on a released record. Earl didn't want it to come out, but they didn't. They couldn't afford to cut another acetate. This was back when they were doing it live to disc yeah. and not on not on tape. Yeah. And now it's 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 the cool thing now for young Earl people to to replicate that mistake when they play. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, a lot of different ways we could uh, we could open up here today. Uh, usually, I, I I do some you know do a little teaching and then we'll, and then we'll do a round. But, uh, but before we get started, um, any questions for James? Let's just start out with some, with some questions because, uh, you know, some of the questions might uh, be helpful for other students. Yes. I have a question for James. Uh, did you spend much time with, uh, with Bill one-on-one, -on -one, Bill Napier? Never got to meet him. Never did. It's, it, that's that's amazing because you probably know more about him than anybody alive. Well, uh, I've just had a whole lot of time to practice, I guess. I, don't know. <laughs> I spent a lot of time with him personally, but at shows and festivals, and uh, I had to pick with him quite a bit, but never got to know him at his home or anything like that. Right. And and James, uh, you know. Uh, 
I, you know, one of the things I, I appreciate about <clears throat> about you, and I know like uh, this is this is there's a little bit of a contra- controversial issue, but but just just to just to, to talk about it for a second, and, and with the sense that that you are you are someone who who is not unfamiliar with hard work, um, you do. Uh, are you still mining coal? Yes. Okay, so James mines coal. Let's just let that sink in for a second. <laughs> mines coal inside Mother Earth, inside the ground in caves. He's working. Well, that's that's an easy job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about one mile underground. One mile underground. So, so if you can think about that, like you know, we could talk about you know the the shamanic aspects of what what happens when you get deep in the ground, you know, for a long time. But this is this is someone that that is helping us today. That is very that is, works with the earth. You know, it stays inside the earth, deep inside the earth. You can just think about that. He's deep inside the earth. He has his connection with Pachamama, and that's one reason that, that his music is is so strong. You can't get more inside the earth than you know, like inside the earth. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. It's a lot of a high percentage of the population you're down your way uh, works for the mines, right? That's all there. That's that's all there is. Mm. Mm-hmm. And um, it's good for your bluegrass. Yeah, yeah, it is. And one thing affects another because when the coal mines are slow, the stores are slow. Mm, so then, you know, just just you know, one thing goes with the other. Yeah, um, you know, people. Uh, uh, it's just it's just so interesting this this whole study of, of traditional bluegrass guitar versus like what's going on in, in the modern world and uh we could just there's so, so many facets about it um but uh you know we're definitely here to to check out the old mountain dew and uh, and daybreak and dixie and and a lot of uh, a lot of ground to cover and do a lot of different different ways any any other questions for for james before before we start out here with, with some expository mr william um, I just want to say thank you for making all your YouTube videos. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You're welcome right? Yeah, William, uh, you know, I was thinking that maybe William was just learning about you this week, but no, he's been, <laughs> he's not about James Tiltner for, for a while. Well, well, I'm, I'm honored. <laughs> well, you do a lot for the community and, uh, and, and a lot of it is just straight community service because, uh, you know, it's just, just for the love of it, uh, you know. You're... Well, the reason I do it is I hope that after I'm dead and gone, somebody will be trying to find recordings of me. <laughs> I, I think that there's a very good chance of that. And uh, and hopefully there'll be more and more, you know, trying to look you up for a lesson when they're passing down in, in Southern Virginia and maybe some. Do you teach, uh, do you teach through Zoom or, or Skype, anything like that? This is the first time I've ever used Zoom. Okay. Okay, but I, I would reckon that if, if anyone wants to... I've you, used uh, Scott before. Okay, right on. So, you know, if anyone wants to to holler at James, uh, uh, let's see here. Let me put your... Uh, was it okay if I put your email in the, in the Go chat? Go right here. Go what, right here. What is it, buddy? I forget. Uh, S-T-I-L-T-N-E-R uh-huh. underscore uh-huh. J-A-Y-M-Z J-A-Y-M-Z 8604 at Yahoo. 8604 at Yahoo. Okay, I think I got it right there. All right, so yeah, feel free to, to, to hit James up because he's a really good teacher and uh, and can impart, you know, uh, some of the broader um, uh, packets of energy that you're that... giving me too much credit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to make you you know uncomfortable or anything, but I think you deserve it. All of it is a rare thing, you know, for someone to, to know the, the music on this level. So it's fantastic. Um, in, in, any questions at all about anything that, that we've covered? Because because y'all had a lot of material to go through this week. It was a lot. And I'm just hoping that that everybody, you know, just pick, I should have mentioned this, but just pick one or the other, you know, of them to, to really focus on uh, either the Mountain Dew or, or Daybreak and Dixie. Um, I would like to make one comment to yeah. James, if I may, if, unless, unless a student has a question for him. Go for it. Um, James, I really liked the way you, you, you had said you, you had never heard Bill Napier play the guitar on Daybreak and Dixie. And so you just compiled out of your mind yeah. Yeah. A, 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 all these uh, great Bill Napier devices or licks to compile a, a hypothetical way he might have played it. I thought that was uh, very good. He would have been proud of you for that because you because you, you did all these nice, uh, great, you did these, these triads like a you know a, a, a like a, a Earl Scruggs kind of rolls for lack of a better uh, description, right? 
So that was really nice to see that. Well, well, thank you very much. That's um, that's a high compliment coming from you. I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Is that, yeah, brilliant uh, creativity with that. Yeah. And that, that's known the style like through and through. When you can come up with the break that sounds like, you know, he, he would have played it like super, super legitimate, super um, inspiring, super creative, just like fiery, all, all the fun stuff. Um, and yeah, you, you know, I, I was learning that that lyric from you. You get a lot of mileage out of that. All, all the stuff. I'm there. not. I'm not sure if Bill played it first or Don did. Okay, right on. That's I'm a... thinking that maybe Bill done it first. Maybe. Uh huh. Uh -huh. But I can't swear to that. I can't either, and I'll tell you why. Because Don Reno. I don't know when Bill Napier started playing the guitar, but Don Reno was playing guitar that way back in the forties. Yeah. 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 Probably. I would imagine they were, you know, contemporaries and, and influenced each other a good bit here and there. Bill told my grandpa that Don offered him a job in his band with no Ray at one time. Wow. But he declined. Yeah. He declined because he was just uh, starting with Charlie Moore. Wow. Okay. That's and he and Charlie Moore did some amazing things and actually got on country radio and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, like usually I would, I would, you know, teach for, for, for a, a little bit here. Um, you know, is, is there anybody that has not had a chance to like study and on any of these? Cause if there anybody that hadn't really had a chance to to study then I, then I'll do that because we, we I don't I don't want to be redundant and, and just go over stuff that everybody's already gone over you know a lot so if everybody's had a chance to you know to to study and and learn a little bit we'll just we'll just we'll just you know we'll go with it um uh but also you know while, while James is here um maybe you could let's see okay Diane uh, okay um maybe maybe James you know if you felt like it could we just go go through maybe like spend five minutes on uh, Mountain Dew, five minutes on on Daybreak and Dixie, and you could just kind of point out a few of the most important things on, on each one. Just you know, kind of maybe some of the the things that uh, that make it super special in, in the Napier style that kind of separate it from just just regular good traditional guitar. Well, um, let's see, Mountain Dew, you want to be on this bridge right here. You want to be on that bridge heavily because that's the sound that's how he that's how he got that sound good point and um he didn't do it that much with charlie but um but that's the uh that's the secret to that song to me anyway yeah yeah he's a it's a it's it's a it's a thin sound and it's a very signature <laughs> sound and so what you're saying is that that he didn't play that way always no he only done it with carter and and you know the stanley brothers he only done it that way yeah and and it sure works for that song you know he yep. probably made it work on a lot of different things but uh yep. yeah so if you want if you want that that super napier sound and and one fun thing with people that are kind of uh you know in the know like you know so to speak about about this kind of stuff um, is that is it, if you start to play close to the bridge, you know, you'll get the nod from, yeah, not, nice near the bridge sound like, you know, buddy, yeah. or, you know, oh, yeah. on, on that, you know, yeah. it's kind of a, a fun, a fun coded way, oh, yeah. that, you know, musicians can, can talk with each other. Oh, you played the mistake. Nice one. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's um, um, I think Don was playing the guitar, like David said earlier, much earlier, mm -hmm. and he had actually recorded before Bill, you know, the guitar, mm -hmm. but the success that they had with, with Bill playing the guitar led Don and Red to record those two albums that I love. And, oh, um, wow. I think they recorded them in two days, tw uh, 24 songs in two days. Wowzers. And, um, yeah. So those, those two albums there. i would i would say that as albums i've listened to them more than anything that charlie moore and bill ever played mm -hmm. as albums mm -hmm. but you can see how 
you can see how that like I, what was the guy's name that owned king Sid nathan oh yeah he was all about making money that's mm -hmm. all he was about mm -hmm. and he's he got Don and red to do that he said this let's see what did he say the stanleys are selling them mm -hmm. hmm. so what so so that's what brought that about i dig it it's uh it's nice to learn more about the history so so we got that we got the close to the bridge uh tone um what else can we kind of point out about mountain dew that might be helpful for the folks that maybe have got like you know 50 percent of it or 75 percent of it but just kind of just to draw their uh attention to a couple more uh stylistic details um probably the most popular little lick is that that, that little part that's yeah. when you say and i think he uses it again in the j part later but that's the that little bit yeah yeah another yeah. thing that that, that that set him apart was he hadn't he was not embarrassed or ashamed to just hang on one note on a string and just down up down up and and and, and that's what kind of another thing that gives you that kind of machine gun sound he said hang on one note yeah. Like over and over again. Oh yeah. Where other people don't want to do. Yeah. So oh, he yeah. could play one note. He could play one note up and down better than ninety nine percent of any other guitar player playing a whole bunch of notes. Yeah, that's I'd a fact. Rather, I'd rather he'll be, hear Bill Napier play one note over and over again. Yep, I would too. And you know, one thing that that. That, you know, this is kind of like to, to, to say it in, in, in this way, uh, maybe a, a little bit untoward. I'm not sure if I know a, a better way to say it, but I'm I'm no stranger to washing my the, the feet in my mouth down with a big old glass of water. <laughs> is, that, um, is it this is hillbilly guitar? This is true yeah, would, hillbilly guitar. I would call it hillbilly guitar. Yes. And mountain style hillbilly. And, and, and some people, yeah. you know, would be they don't want to associate themselves with, with that idea because because you know for I, I don't know you know because they're you know maybe maybe maybe, maybe they're embarrassed to, to be you know related to a, a, a hillbilly sound but right. to me, they're they're missing out on you know so much of the best stuff you know to me just to, to hang on one note and, and it sounds good you know it, it, this is the spirit of the music you know you yeah. get too far away from that hillbilly spirit it turns into a different music and we love yeah. it because it's charming and it has this essence to it um, yeah. that's connected with the mountains that's connected to coal mining that's connected to living back in the, in the hills there's no electricity um, connected to the earth you know all, all this kind of stuff and so there's you know there's a sacred value to it that people, you know, readily discard because they, they right. don't know how to like rectify it or justify it in their mind based on like how they might be judged for it or whatever. It gets some complicated right. social aspects. Yeah. But all that to say is that, is that we love some, some hillbilly guitar right here. I, I guarantee While you. I'm thinking about it. Uh, I wanted to, I keep thinking there's, a, there were a whole lot of guitar players back in the thirties and forties that played lead this simple minimalist, three th th up to the fifth fret kind of way raven yeah. belmore bill monroe and then also some of the younger people like bill harrell yep mm -hmm. uh, and then of course the younger generation still like ricky lee he was a guy I used to follow around when i was a teenager okay. oh yeah he's, he's a good uh, guy keith whitley the younger stanley people uh, ralph didn't want his guitar players to, to to do anything fancy he wanted them to play simple yeah, yeah. junior yeah. And shit yeah jeepers ricky lee is played with the stanley brothers he's an, un, an unsung hero could just rip the snot out of a guitar just amazing fast ripper machine gun style yeah. doesn't get doesn't get much credit no um, hey he, he actually called me one time yeah and he i had played bill chatham uh-huh and he had seen me and he he liked how i played it and wow. he had he hadn't talked to anybody in years from what i can understand so mm -hmm. That was a big one. Ralph? I love that. Rick, Ricky Lee. Oh, Ricky Lee. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. That's the, thanks for sharing that. So we got We got our close to the bridge. We got our... And we got our, our, our hanging on one of... Yeah. And so, like, um, you know... The essence of, of this is, is so great for everyone everyone to be studying. Uh, I remember uh, someone someone wrote that uh, it's like a jeepers. I wasn't sure if I really wanted to try to even learn this, you know. <laughs> but 
but then but but then you know the because all, all this other stuff material we, we've been studying this is our fifth week um then then the connections you know start start to become uh, more evidence like okay this is actually a lot like this other song that, that i already know it's approachable it's like okay i know this phrasing and so the, 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 i'm hoping that everyone is, is going to start to see how much all these songs like people say that all this music sounds alike well it kind of does you know and we're we know everything we studied except for the very first you know it's been at a g position and so okay. hopefully we're, we're thinking about you know there's there, there's like okay we got we got four bar licks and we got half bar licks right like you know it's just kind of like you know tetris you just like take them and you make you know your 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 arrangement out of them mix and match like mr potato head and hopefully it still looks like a one thing i will say about bill style the early bill style is he played ahead of the beat there we go there we go that's that's a such a beautiful point to make thank you for making that. ralph plays ahead of the beat yes and this is the drive that, that they all that. played ahead of the beat <laughs> that's right thank you for saying that and um don played a, a, a little bit behind the beat oh okay all right he played just a little more bluesy just a little bit all right well th these are the finer nuances there's there's not much blues in bill's playing but there is some in don's i feel you there and um and we're talking about milliseconds ahead of a beat like we're not talking about a whole not, not talking about a whole lot no, a little bit but not talking about breaking time i'm talking just like it's just there it's right here then there's the beat then there's here yeah yeah so um that's Very good point I don't think Bill done. He he played a lot on the beat with Charlie, but when he first started out, he was he was playing way ahead of the beat. He was almost breaking time, but not breaking time. That's a very exciting sound that makes you want to get up out of your seat and be excited yep. about life and dance yep. and say, "Oh wow, what's happening?" You know, that's yep. playing ahead of the beat. That, that's that, that's the drive time. Yeah, I, I did notice on Mountain Dew, even on the recording, it starts out at about 140 beats a minute and finishes up at about 152 beats a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is this is one of the the real secrets about bluegrass. It's not metronomic. The the, the no. bluegrass uh, oftentimes it, it can be metronomic for like some sometimes, but the, the the timing can be dynamic. I remember there's a great recording of, of Scruggs, you know, playing. Um, and he just like keeps going faster it's faster and he speeds up like 30 beats in the first break then it's freaking really exciting uh, although so, Scruggs did tell me that had he had access to a metronome as a child he would have loved it <laughs> i love that and of course there's also the story about um about earl and his brother was it horace and they started they start in front of the house and they, and they start getting time yeah. and then they both walk the opposite directions around the back of the house and and the idea was that when they got to the back of the house they would still be in time and so it's it's very important to be able to keep a steady beat but then also be able to you know to to move beautifully with it that's one of my favorite things about david is that his 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 timing is not static like he's he's a he's a metronome master he can play right on the beat his, his, his timing is legendary but when you get in the jam session and he, he's not going to hold you back he's he's, he's going to let, let it breathe and, and let it move one yeah. of my my worst experiences and i'm gonna and i'll stop talking here in a second maybe um, <laughs> was i went to i went to nashville and this happened two different times it happened once in my own band we were playing on the on the delta queen and and it was me and my sister my sister and i had a band called casey and chris and the two stringers and we were playing on the delta queen for a week and and we had these two you know uh style style warp what do you call them like you know musicians from from nashville uh that, that were playing the bass and they were playing the guitar and uh you know basically mercenaries you know, uh, uh, you know, friendly mercenaries, and 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 I remember I was playing Old Joe Clark, and I was just like, I'm, I want to get on top of the beat and like, you know, be excited and you know, all this kind of stuff, and like, you know, and I was playing it, and and they, and they would not play with me, and I remember at one, and they just wanted to keep their time, and, and then I remember one around, I was like, what in the world is happening here? And I looked around and, and I watched one of them like nodding at the other one, like, yeah, we're keeping time. We're not letting them, you know, rush, you know, whatever. And I was like, I had to have a word with, with, with the person after the, after the end of that. And, and I believe that was probably the last time, you know, we, we, we had, we had trouble finding people to play, you know, help, help us. And, and I have another time on stage when I was trying to, you know, I was trying to, you know, play with exciting music and, and just like the band, absolutely. And these are like, you know, metronome guy. Yeah. Jimmy Martin called it. Well, he, he called it. He had a name for it. I won't say it. You know, on, on the. On, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, 
you know, so, so, and they just hung me out to dry. And it was just absolutely awful because they played too much metronome music. I, I've even seen like, you know, a tape of Earl Scruggs, like getting held back by a snare drummer, like on, on national television one time. It's like, why are you holding Earl Scruggs back? Please stop. Please or stop. somebody with the, or somebody with taps on their shoes. Yeah. Yeah. That can, you know, so this, this timing, you know, can be dynamic, you know, you're, you're hearing, you know, so, so it went from 140 something up to 152 because Bill Napier is playing on the top of the beat and he's making you excited about life. And it's just fantastic. So it's nice to talk about, about the drive. Thank you very much for bringing that up. I would have fired Bill Napier. Go use Jump Genius. Two hours a day for you. <laughs> yeah. I will say that there was one recording that he played when David said, you don't need all those frets uh -huh. in his little post, you know? Yeah. Um, um, you know, what, what was the song? Old... Uh, Grandpa Jones played it a lot. R Rattler. R oh, yeah. Rattler. Here, Rattler. Yeah. Yeah. Bill actually typo out, I think, on the ninth fret. Nice. Wow. And played. So look at, wow. look, at, look, at how, look at how much you're cutting off. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot left up there. That no, is... playing it out of C position. Yeah, yeah, what a nice shimmery, <laughs> bright light sound. Yep, yeah. Well, fa fantastic. This is this is good. Uh, this is you know this is part of of soaking up the the, the essence and, and and the ethos of the music. You know, there's a lot of you know energy that that, that uh, you know beyond just just the playing, talking about the music, the, the concepts, all this kind of stuff. It's good good for everyone to hear about this. I'm sorry if it's a little bit boring. It's not boring boring to me at all. Uh, well, uh, one thing I would say that. Um, Bill never took credit for something that he didn't do. Hmm. I'll say that about him was um because my grandpa told him said that my, my my grandpa told him said I love the way you played old love letters. Hmm. And Bill said that wasn't me, that was George. George Shuffler. Okay, yeah. right. Right on. Oh. Yeah, okay. So there's another so uh just to just to touch on that real quick. Um, the different cross picking styles, because you brought that up in the in, in the video. We haven't got to gotten to much cross picking, but you were you were uh, making a, a big distinction a, a, about the way Bill Napier cross picked versus the way that Shuffler cross picked. Could you talk uh, about that a minute? Well, um, Bill done the. That's an upstroke, right? That's up. Yeah, George. I don't ever think he done the up. I think he was. Cool. So, so, uh, so, so Napier was down, up, up, down, up, up. Is that right? Yeah, that was like a Jesse roll, uh, a, a backwards roll, and then and then George Shuffler was down, cool. down, up, down, yeah. down, up, yeah. and then David is down, up, down, up. And so there's three beautiful different ways that, that you can, they can cross pick. It's good to know yeah. about all three and try them out and see what you like. Well, uh, Bill Napier, his pick stroke direction was alternating, but he did a backward roll generally. Hmm. Where George Shuffler did a forward roll, but he didn't do down, up, down, up stroke. It was down, down, up, down, down, up. Yeah. But, but Bill Napier did an alternating stroke. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, he did do that. These are the these are the nuances, and it's good to just kind of like. Him I uh, made a, a conscious effort to play more like Bill Napier, but then I switched it. For the most part, I like a forward roll, but with alternating strokes. So Bill wow. Napier would do this. It's a backward roll, but it's an alternating stroke. And uh, what George Shuffler yeah. did, I can't really do. George Shuffler was a good friend too, and I, we used to tease, tease each other. I told him he cross picked all wrong, and he said, "No, you cross pick all wrong." And uh, we used to do that at the record table and shocking the 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 odd the, the people that come up the record table. Said, I can't believe they're sitting here arguing about cross picking. Fighting, <laughs> fighting. <laughs> well, my favorite so, stuff was George. Not to you know get off of Bill, but my favorite stuff with George was when he would do the cross picking in the A position.
a big sound. That's a huge sound. That's a, that's a big, thick, chorus sound. Yeah, that is. And that doesn't sound like anything that's that's being played today. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. And and but, but I, like you hear, know, I, I really like to hear a lot more of that on the current bluegrass scene. A lot more of what yeah, you just did. I would too. Uh, absolutely. So I, you know, uh, uh, one of the things that that happens with culture is that um is that often what gets encouraged gets uh gets proliferated or precipitated and right. so um so if we're thinking about in terms of like <clears throat> okay i'm playing my my lick i'm playing my my simple and and like i finish my break and no one says anything yeah. it's like it's like oh gosh how does that make me feel i'm not sure how I, what, what i think about anything but if i play my you know my hottest licks possible and then be like be like son and yeah they, they make the stank face and they're like you know all this kind of stuff then then that gets like you know proliferated <laughs> within the culture and so and, yeah. and it might not be because i i like that lick but it's just because my friends made a noise after i got done playing you yeah. know so it's just 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 keep that in mind you know when you get to different places is that is that is that a lot of the people that love it and that really touches their heart they might not be very loud about it but yeah. if you know it's good music and you know that it's 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 pleasing to you and you're not insecure about it that that energy goes out there and uh you, you might not get a you might not get a big response you know from it. right. it's like you know uh in monroe he might play his amazing mandolin break and no one because he didn't in it but you know, it's some of the most epic legendary you know yeah mandolin playing you can play all the time just a little bit more more of the context uh because because it can get it can get uh it can get frustrating and like you know it's like why why isn't my my sweet music just like that that's nothing hot about that but it's beautiful um you know i think yeah. i think it's beautiful anyway you know and and so just just to take that for what it's worth you know students you know a, as you go forth don't ever feel like you got to play hot licks and I, I don't think you'd you'd be thinking about that too much if you're in this course anyway but it's not like we're not going to get to the hot licks you know we're 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 we're, sa we're, we're saving a lot of that since we got get the, get the foundation and then we'll you know we're we're, we're heading up the you know we got would, some hot licks i would probably paper. venture to say that people thought that when bill first come out that he was just you know playing the hot licks that's a really good point. He was so now very, very what he plays is traditional, is old. Yeah, you know. Yep. Same with same with with Earl Scruggs. Really good point. Napier res, was revolutionary at the time. Yeah. No one had ever played that fast before. Now we think you know a lot of people think it's you know, like really Raven good. Delmore on steroids. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really. Since you, uh, since you uh, talk about those, I I will have to say that my great uncle loved them so much that he named his two oldest sons out and then raven wow no kidding i, I uh, as a teacher i always uh, expect my students or suggest to my students they listen to the delmore brothers and yeah. how beautiful a minimalist guitar a minimalist approach to playing lead on a guitar can be yeah oh yeah Let's see what was that when they absolutely you know the, music, Last the, 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 the hot guitar. Hey, hey chris before we uh move on to have the students uh demonstrate what they've been working on uh, i'd like to uh tell james that i really was impressed by your level of detail and and and, and i'll give you an example of that like when you talked about the, some of the G, the, the, the options of G runs yeah. that, that can be done. Yeah. And, and uh, there, there are several ways it can be done. There can be. And then there's also the. And then there's. And I liked how you talked about well, hitting the A string twice. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Bill Napier did all of those. He hit yeah. the E note twice. He hit the A note twice. Or the, I'm, I'm not the A note, I'm talking about the A string. And then he also did this. And he, uh, he was a master of 
varying those kinds of things. And you pointed out the detail when you said he hit it, he hit that A that A string twice. Yeah. I was very impressed with that because most people don't understand the, how important those differences are. Right. Well, well, the way that I always heard it was he played it so fast that you could pretty well play any note that sounded decent there and get by with it. You know, you could. Um, but when you slow it down, you can hear what he's doing. And up yeah. to speed, you know, may not know what he's doing, but it makes a difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Because um, he done that a lot. That was the real secret to Bill's playing is you hit the same note twice or even three times. And he just filled in the gaps, you know. Yeah. That's, the one, that's that's the way I describe it. Right. And he comes down and goes. One I like. That. See, that's not easy to do. Play one note. I can't even do it. Yeah. I yeah. challenge anyone to play one right. note and make yeah. each note sound that even. Yeah. As even as Bill Gates could do. Yeah. Really yeah. good discussion. Right. Thanks for all the nuances there. Let's get to the the, uh, the students' playing. 